Hi, everybody. This is Gad Saad. As many of you know, I've been fighting against all forms of departures from reason for many years now, which, of course, culminated in my writing The Parasitic Mind. In The Parasitic Mind, I discuss transactivism as the result of several parasitic ideas being at play. Uh, and I explain that all of the idea pathogens that I cover in the parasitic mind stem from the desire to be freed from the shackles of reality because it serves some, quote, noble goal, right? So we need to live with more compassion and kindness and love. And therefore, so what if we blurred the lines of what it means to be male or female? Who, who does it harm if someone says that they're six foot four biological male with a nine inch penis, but they self identify as a woman? Love is love, just accept and move on. And as I've explained on perhaps 13 trillion occasions, I'm fully accepting of the fact that people have a right to believe whatever they want in the pursuit of their personhood. That doesn't give them the right to require other people to celebrate their personhoods. It doesn't allow them to win medals in women's competitions because they self-identify as a woman. It doesn't give them the right to say, I'm going to walk around naked in the showers with eight-year-old little girls because, hey, I just happen to have a nine-inch female penis. So life is about trade-offs. Life is about navigating through competing uh, f functions that you're trying to maximize. So yes, I can, in my interaction with an individual, be fully kind and tolerant in supporting any personhood that they wish to abide by. That doesn't mean that I need to sit quietly when in the pursuit of, you know, your uh, unique personhood, we murder and rape truth. What makes us human from a very young age, one of the first things we know is how to assort things into male and female. Many languages, including Arabic, recognize male and female, as thus French, not Armenian, by the way. Uh, one of the first things that little children recognize is how to assort people based on their biological phenotype. 117 billion people have apparently fully understood, that's the total number of people that has been estimated to exist since uh, Homo sapiens came to be, 117 billion people really did not have a difficult time understanding what male or female is in deciding to have sex and reproduce. But three minutes ago, we stopped knowing what biological sex was. And please don't write to me and say, no, there's a distinction between sex and gender. I've written books that deal with that. The evolutionary basis of consumption, which is right here, talks about uh, the standard social science model. This is a term from Tubi and Cosmetes that, you know, pitted against evolutionary psychology and what the social constructivists believe and so on. Social constructivism, of course, is one of the idea pathogens that I discuss in the parasitic mind. I've published many scientific papers on sex differences. So I don't need to be lectured about the distinction between sex and gender, although both these, by the way, highly correlate, okay? Notwithstanding the fact that there are some boys who have certain uh, prototypical female behaviors and female preferences, archetypally speaking, and vice versa. That doesn't take away from the fact that uh, sex and gender are highly correlated. And again, as I said, I don't need to be lectured about what the distinction is. The reality, though, is that many... Uh, trans activists are no longer arguing that it's a matter of gender, that even biological sex itself is not binary because, hey, intersex people, to which, of course, I put out a, a a sad truth clip several years ago where I argued that we need to have more tolerance for 
finger diversity and finger fluidity that while you know it seems as though humans have you know a fixed trait of 10 toes and 10 fingers there are medical conditions medical situations whereby people are born with a different number therefore it's not true that humans come with 10 fingers and 10 toes and when you have a child and the first thing that the nurse does is count the number of fingers and toes of your child precisely to ensure that they have 10 well that's just finger bigotry okay so anyways why am i saying all this because in 2014 i went to you ready wellesley college yes this is not satirical this is i'm being literal to give a talk on many of the things that eventually became the, the parasitic mind and so this was a precursor to the parasitic mind where i was going around and telling people about these idea pathogens and what happens when you have thought police and language police and epistemological police and so on and so forth at the end of my uh, invited lecture i stayed to chat with people and there was one student who was you know, who was very staunchly uh, engaging me, I mean, very politely, very nicely, but she was basically arguing that, well, you know, I, what do you mean, well, what's wrong with having professors repeatedly poll their students about what their gender identities are? So basically every every class, you don't just take attendance, you, you okay, uh, uh, student ID so-and-so, what's your gender identity today so that I know I know how to address you and of course, that could be changing from week to week in the lectures. And so I was trying to explain to her that that makes sense, that society should be organized along uh, a system whereby we don't presume that we know what someone's uh, phenotypic representation is to us as a default value, right? And she kept insisting that, no, it was a perfectly reasonable thing to expect professors to poll their students about their gender identities, to which I answered, because what you do when you're testing these ideas is you take it to the boundary condition, and then you ask an example that seems like it's an, quote, extreme example. And by the way, that's what she answered. I said, okay, so do you think that if we were to have a gynecology clinic where patients are coming to be seen by the physician the gynecologist that the receptionist should not pretend to know that the patients are women but rather you know poll them you know because they could be potentially men right uh, and she said well that's that's a that's an extreme example meaning that she she didn't see that as a a, a reasonable thing for me to retort with well let me read you some stuff that just has been happening on Twitter recently. So this is, let me read this first one. This is, no, not this one. Hold on a sec. This, let me go to this one. Okay, not this one either. Give me a second, sorry. This is Eric Burnett, MD, uh, Dr. Eric B, who's responding. So this is a physician, right? Remember my, my, my boundary example was to use a gynecologist. Why? Because the idea is that at least physicians have to be wedded to reality, right? You, if you're having someone checking your cervix, then they would presumably presumably understand that this is a woman. Uh, but anyways, so Eric Burnett, who's a medical doctor, uh, was responding to Dr. Ahmad Malik, who himself is a physician, Uh there were two photos of Dylan Mulvaney. Some of you know Dylan, the biological male who has been living as a woman and getting all of the companies to choose her as their spokesperson. Uh, Dr. Ahmad Malik, Malik, by the way, in Arabic means king. So Dr. Ahmad Malik wrote, is this person a woman? That's it. He's asked, it's, a, it's a question reasonable question maybe he maybe he's trying to educate himself as a physician he didn't know that so who knows so eric burnett writes dylan has been harassed and bullied for simply existing it really breaks my heart to see a doctor bullying her too this behavior is antithetical to a physician's oath dr Melik, this is really unbecoming of a physician please do better so 
a physician asking, but by the way, we don't need physicians to confirm what is male or female, because remember, I mentioned a few minutes ago that there have been 117 billion people that have always really known, and as far as I know, very, very small percentage of them had medical degrees. For example, I, although I've got a very long list of uh, degrees and academic accolades, I don't have a medical degree. And luckily for me, I was able to choose a wife who apparently I was able to have children with, notwithstanding the fact that I didn't have a medical degree, so I couldn't absolutely know for sure whether she was male or female when I picked that particular person. And as you know, the the last U.S. justice to to become a to be appointed as U.S. justice, uh, when asked by a senator, "Can you please define what is a woman?" she paused nervously and said, "Well, I can't answer that question because I'm not a biologist." This is in the 21st century. This is not some grotesque theater of the absurd. This is what happens when minds are parasitized. A U.S. justice does not have the epistemological security in understanding reality to say, are you kidding me? You're asking me such a stupid question. It's an adult female. It's an adult female. It's a, right, you can answer it using gametes. You could answer it using chromosomes. You could answer it in 73 different thousand ways of, well, actually, there aren't that many ways to define what a, a, a woman or a man is. But in any case, coming back to the point. So this physician thought that Dr. Malik asking, is this person a woman? Was, I mean, it was violence. It was a violation of the Hippocratic Oath, okay? Because, you know, do better, right? So I wrote back to Dr. Uh, Burnett very politely. I said, Dr. Burnett, I was hoping that you might answer a few questions given that you are a physician. One, can men menstruate? Two, can men bear children? Three, is it correct to state that humans are a sexually reproducing species consisting of the male and female phenotypes? Four, are there physiological, anatomical, hormonal, morphological, and behavioral differences between biological males and biological females? And might some of these manifest themsel themselves in athletic competitions? Thank you. He, he never answered to me, although he engaged many other people who were trolling him and insulting him. I, I was asking a, a very reasonable set of four questions, which of course is directly relevant to my own work because I'm an evolutionary behavioral scientist. I study sex differences. I've done studies on you know, the, the effects of the ovulatory cycle on women's behaviors. I've done studies on uh, how men's testosterone's uh, change as a function of various conspicuous consumption realities. So I'm steeped in physiology and biology and evolutionary psychology and consumer psychology and psychology of decision making. So it's directly germane to my scientific career to know this. And he's a physician, so he understands what male or female is because, you know, the rest of us don't have access to that kind of information or the expertise, the imprimatur to be able to say definitively if someone is male or female. And remember, many, many uh, medical uh, associations now say that you should simply say that this was the sex that was assigned at birth. And now we teach children, well, you know, physicians take an educated guess about what someone's based on these overt phenotypes, right? Okay. All right. So let's go on. So then a a person with colored hair, by the way, I mean, literally, or colored whatever, writes to me, writes and says, uh, she she has since removed, deleted her tweet, which again makes you wonder, why do you delete your tweet when you are standing on the side of settled science on truth? I, I hate when they say evolutionary biologist here, so smug, so condescending, so patronizing. And she says, yes, I confirm, you know, you, whatever, you're a bigot, stop spreading bigotry. This is to me because I was asking those questions to Dr. Burnett, right? Very sober questions, questions that should be easily answerable. Uh, and she, and she and this evolutionary biologist confirmed that Dr. Burnett was right, and you know I was a bigot, and so whatever. Uh, then I find out, by the way, I said, "Oh, can you share your academic CV so that I can get a sense of the credentials that you have, 
so that I can understand what kind of evolutionary biology would result in, you know, you being on the right side of this story. She deleted her tweet. And it turns out, by the way, that someone else found, because she looks very, very young. She looks like she's, you know, a teenager, uh, that she's graduating with an ecology degree undergrad, right? So she is pulling rank on me as an evolutionary biologist. Stay in your lane. You know, I'm just a business school professor. What would I know? All right, so that's one. Let's move on now. Now, this first one, Dr. Burnett was a physician, but um, I don't know. I don't think he's a gynecologist, so he can't definitively state what is male or female because, you know, he may understand some elements of the body. I mean, information that is completely outside of our purview, you know, our, our, our non-physician purview. But here come the gynecologists. So here's the first one I shared today. Here is, no, I don't want to do this one first. Let me do this one. Nope, sorry, bear with me. This one. Gynecologist here, the answer is yes, and you're a bigot, not a good look for a physician. She's responding to Dr. Ahmad Malik, who asked, is this person a woman in, with regard to, to Dylan uh, Mulvaney? So this is Michelle Quinn, MD, F-A-C-O-G, which is probably some uh, designation for a gynecologist. So gynecologist here, hey, the big people are here. I'm a gynecologist. You know, I deliver babies, you know, from this thing called, well, we don't know what it's called. It's some kind of like cavity where like babies come out, babies that are sexless and genderless. We take a best guess estimate. So this is a gynecologist who uses her, you know, professional imprimatur, Michelle Quinn, MD, F-A-C-O-G, gynecologist here. The answer is yes, it is a woman. And you're a bigot, not a good look for a physician. Someone else then wrote to me saying that uh, that person, by the way, who, who also has colored hair, aposomatic coloring, hair coloring, blue hair, and so on, as a gynecologist, I'm not being, I'm being literal. That person apparently has a daughter who's meaning a, a son who's, who's self-identifying as a, as a girl. So that, so now we've got Dr. Burnett, a physician who tells Dr. Malik, a physician, you're violating your oath by asking whether a, a man with a biological, a biological male with a penis who says that they're a girl, you asking if they really are a girl that's violating a Hippocratic oath, right? It's not violating reality. It's not violating the epistemology of truth. It's not violating the dignity of truth. He's being harmful. He's a bigot. Dr. Quinn comes along and says, she's a gynecologist. She says, I'm here to confirm using my professional expertise that Dylan Mulvaney is a woman, bigot. And then finally, the last one on that list, uh, sorry, bear with me, is this one right here. Then Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, OBGYN, at Dr. Jen Lincoln, OBGYN here. I love it. Now, this is the third one that uses that, that structure. Imprimatur of pulling rank here. OBGYN here, and the answer is yes. Move on and stop spreading hate. This is, again, her responding to Dr. Ahmad Malik, who is saying, is this person a woman? So let me re rehash, let me recap. A physician asked the question, is Dylan Mulvaney a woman? Okay, not very ha hateful. I mean, he's, he's asking, is, is this real? Is this maybe I missed some medical continuing education seminar? He asked a question. One physician Dr. Burnett answered and said, yes, and my God, what a sh what shame you're bringing to our profession by questioning whether a biological male with a penis is a woman. I tried to answer, I tried to engage Dr. Burnett, asking him a set of very reasonable questions. He ignored me. And then we had two gynecologists, gynecologists here, both confirm that Del Dylan Mulvaney is a woman and that you should stop spreading hate and bigotry. 
Now, I wonder if the boards that certify these gynecologists are on the side of the gynecologists here. And then finally, one last one that I'd like to share with you. This is Nina Turner. I had never heard of her until you know she came across my feed. If someone says they're a woman, they're a woman. Not a tough concept. You get that? It, it's what you say you are that determines what you are. Not difficult to understand. Okay? My Belgian shepherd self-identifies as a giraffe. It ends. This whole thing about having nomenclatures and taxa that defines what species are. No, there aren't these kinds of markers. So there is no such thing as, you know, we're sexually reproducing species that's sexually dimorphic. Therefore, we exactly understand what male female is using all sorts of very reliable cues that we've used for 117 billion people since the existence of humanity. No, if someone says they're a woman, they're a woman, not a tough concept. And then I put a photo of me from 1985 at Coronado del Coronado Hotel. Yes, you know it, the one with the red shorts, with my eight packs, yes, my eight pack abs, and I said, I'm a woman. Now, by that logic, what's wrong with that? Sure, it comes across as though I'm being facetious, but I'm not. Yes, you see me as the model of masculinity, deep voice, structured face, ridiculous morphological features of masculinity, but I'm not male. I'm female. I am a woman. Now, many people started writing to me very hateful things. Asshole, old man, piece of shit, all this kind of stuff. But why would you do that? If I, what makes you think that I'm not being fully genuine when I say that I'm a woman, despite my being the archetype and the epitome of masculinity? right? But Nina Turner says, hey, not difficult concept. Whether you're a man or a woman is what you say you are. That's it, period. Okay, so now let's, we've covered all this. Why do I take time to do this? Because humans have prefrontal cortex. Humans have developed meta-knowledge. Humans are unique from all other glorious species on earth because we have a unique capacity to think that has allowed us to map the human genome, solve Fermat's last theorem, propose the theory of evolution that explains the evolution of every species that exists on Earth, and on and on and on. The ingenuity and intelligence of humans is breathtaking. The complexity of the human brain is so extraordinary that many people have said that there is no machine that is remotely as complex as that captured by the human brain. So we are really quite unique in terms of our ability to think. And one of the features of being human is to be able to recognize what male and female is, to recognize what the epistemology of truth is, what it, what it is when someone is delusional or not. So for example, if you suffer from paranoid schizophrenia and you say, I think that the dog next door is speaking to me and is telling me that I need to call to kill all the neighbors next door because they are Satan worshipers who are going to bring the end of times, well, then they would, you will you will need to be sent to a psychiatric institution. And what differentiates the fact that you are engaging in ordered or disordered thinking is precisely because we know that it wouldn't make sense for someone who is operating uh, in a normal manner to be able to say uh, the dog is speaking to me and the neighbors are Satan worshippers that I'm going to go and kill. That's why you then are diagnosed as having paranoid schizophrenia and here comes the pharmacological intervention and hopefully the voices go away. So a fundamental feature of a well-functioning human is to be able to navigate through the daily life and recognizing what is a giraffe, what is a bird, 
who is your wife, right? Remember Oliver Sacks, the, the, the man who mistook his wife for a hat, that because that comes with a particular neurological disorder, right? There are many. Aphasia is one, okay? So there are all sorts of disordered psychiatric and neurological things that cause people to not function in a way that you would expect them to function, okay? So now we come to the parasitic ideas that I'm talking about. Why did I use the neuroparasitological framework in explaining, oh, you know, the woke mind virus of Elon Musk, you know, the one that I've been talking about for three decades now, Uh well, it comes from the fact that no human being who is functioning properly has to have a debate about, you know, the contentious issue of what it is to be male or female. In no way does that imply that gender dysphoria does not exist. In no way does that imply that gender dysphoric people should not be treated kindly, should not be treated with respect should not be discriminated against. That doesn't mean that in the pursuit of being tolerant to people who have gender dysphoria, we lobotomize our minds. We cease to function in reality because 0.01% of people have real, genuine gender dysphoria, the 99.99% must now call a tree a giraffe because you don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want that my passport no longer have has male or female because, you know, what about people who are two-spirited or gender neutral? You don't erase the biological marker of 99.99% of humanity because you need to be tolerant to 0.01%. You treat those people with kindness while still navigating in the epistemology of truth. So the reason why I weigh in on this, number one, because I am a defender of truth, because I'm a professor and I'm supposed to be navigating in the currency of truth. Therefore, truth matters to me. This is what I explain in The Parasitic Mind. My two life ideals are truth and freedom. I can't be free to think if I am shackled by having to celebrate your unique personhood. Say that this tree is a giraffe or else you hurt my feelings and you're a bigot. But the tree is not a giraffe. I can still respect you and, and love you without going on the journey with you, okay? So these gynecologists are saying, no, I deal with these matters on a day-to-day -day basis and Dylan Mulvaney with testicles and a penis is a woman. This is not good. Nothing good comes from going in a hysteria of mass psychosis because you are trying to be infinitely tolerant by the way this is what led me to put out the sad truth clip on lex friedman i am sure that lex friedman is a lovely guy i am sure that lex friedman maybe means well i don't know or maybe it's all a shtick i'll i'll be quiet for now about what i think it is but that doesn't mean that spreading a message Love will conquer all. Love is love. Kindness to all. The only way we're going to solve all problems is through greater kindness. That's not a realistic adult position to take. That makes you a three-year-old living in unicornia, utopia. That's not how an adult thinks, right? My doctoral training was in psychology of decision-making, specifically behavioral decision theory. And in behavioral decision theory, we study the concept of rationality in the context of axiomatic rationality, which is something different. But, but in other words, I am wedded to the idea of studying ordered and disordered thinking, right? And so rationality matters to me both as a human being and in terms of my scientific career, this is why I fight about these matters.
So the debate about trans activism is not because people are bigoted. I certainly am not. I'm about as socially liberal as they come. But it's because I'm indignant to murdering reality and truth and human decency in the pursuit of pathological empathy. I can chew gum and walk at the same time. As I explained during my Canadian Senate hearings of 2017, I'll put a link to it at the end of this clip, right? I warned about all these things. Nothing comes from rejecting reality in the pursuit of unicornia, uh, infantile, I'm okay, you're okay, right? Walk tall, defend truth while also being kind to people. Gynecologists should not be saying that women can exist in the form of having penises and testicles. That's grotesque. That's untruthful. That's dishonest. That's condescending. That's patronizing. And that's a violation of the Hippocratic Oath. It's a violation of the existential Hippocratic Oath because he's, they're doing a mindfuck on millions of people. Have a good day, everybody. And if you wish to support me, you can do so in many ways, one of which you can subscribe to my uh, exclusive content on Twitter. I set that up because thousands of people said that they would support it. Many have signed up already, but many fewer than promised. Please consider supporting me in, in any way that you can, and you can do so by going to Twitter and subscribing for a very nominal monthly fee to support those who are trying to make sure that your children do understand the difference between male and female. Take care, everybody.